Well, one of those watching was Alicia Kearns, Conservative MP for Rutland and Melton and a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Alicia, very good morning to you. Morning, Jimmy. Uh, a very emotional moment watching President Zelensky addressing the Commons yesterday. And yet, as I say, you were watching. What impact did that speech have on you and what difference do you think it could make? I think it just continued to strike into all of our hearts the enormous courage um, that Zelensky has shown, the enormous courage of all the people in Ukraine who have gone from being people like you and me, going about their normal day jobs, suddenly having to defend their country, standing up, taking weapons, um, living in bunkers. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking and it was a really difficult day yesterday. Now, the Kremlin is trying to mitigate the effects of Western sanctions. Trading on the Moscow Stock Exchange will be partially suspended on Wednesday. People with foreign current bank, uh, currency bank accounts now face a limit on how much money they can withdraw. Being on the Foreign Affairs Committee as you are and closer to what's going on, what effect are the sanctions actually having on President Putin and Russia? And how will ordinary Russian people feel the effects of sanctions, do you think? So if for the last kind of decade, Putin has told the Russian people that he's created this fortress around Russia, that he's protected them, that financially the West wouldn't be able to hurt them financially. But what the average Russian has seen over the last two weeks is that, for example, trying to get to work using their underground, they now can't use Apple Pay. Uh, they won't be able to buy Coca-Cola anymore. Uh, that their bank accounts, they can't take out the money they want. They can't put the travel they want. That their money isn't worth what it used to be. Um, and essentially, we've actually seen a leak from the Russian secret service that suggests that the entire Russian economy will have collapsed by June. And obviously that is exactly our intent. Our intent is to make this cost for Putin at home so that the Russian people tell him to stop, so the oligarchs tell him to stop. But also we're trying to stop him being able to finance and fund this war. And so we know that the sanctions are having an impact. And what do we know about how the Russian army are dealing with the situation at the moment? I hear, like, for instance, their 40-mile convoy, they've had tanks that have been stuck mm -hmm. in mud or they've been running out of ammunition. What can you actually tell us of the reality? So when I was in Ukraine back in January, I remember being told by the intelligence services that there was a big gap between what Putin thought his military was capable of and what they really were and how well stopped they were and how quickly they could or couldn't actually do things versus what he thought they could. And that's exactly what we've seen. Um, and what we've seen particularly in Ukraine is his uh, convoys running out of fuel. Uh, we've seen that they haven't been able to traverse the roads. They haven't realised that Ukraine's roads weren't strong enough to be able to take some of these uh, some of these tanks which are now stuck he hasn't thought about the weather the weather is about to get a lot lot worse and essentially he won't be able to get the fuel and supplies that he needs to uh, to his tanks and everything else he also thought this was going to be a three day operation to take Ukraine because he had misjudged the capability of his own uh, military and that is everything that we're seeing played out now now, the US has rejected an offer by Poland to send all of its MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine via an American air base in Germany. Uh, a Pentagon spokesperson says such a prospect raises serious concerns for NATO. So what's your take on that, Alicia? Look, we're, we're, we're having a really difficult time where we have to recognise that Putin is a nuclear power and he has a lot of nuclear warheads. And we have to act on the basis that he is willing to use them. Um, NATO has decided that it is not willing to put in place a no-fly zone. Um, and it is fantastic that Poland has offered these aircraft. It is exactly what uh, the Ukrainians need. We need to be giving them every possible air power we can to protect themselves from the skies and protect themselves from the Russian Air Force. Um, so this shows that clearly there must be intelligence uh, that the US have seen. That they are very worried about the potential escalations um, that we will see from Putin if particular types of support are provided to the Ukrainians by Western members of NATO. There's huge efforts, as I'm sure you're aware, of people in Leicestershire who are trying to do their bit to help people fleeing Ukraine. I just want you to have a little listen, Alicia, to Clive Langley from Leicestershire, who we spoke to yesterday on the show. Well, me and uh, our happy band of uh, travellers, we we flew out to Prague, picked up some vans there. Uh, church has a church school just outside Prague, which is being used as a refugee centre uh, at the moment. It's absolutely overflowing. We were asked to go up to Krakow, 
the main problem we have at the moment is getting people from the border to the main cities where they can get transport to wherever it is they're going. But the problem is there's only so many places on, on the trains and on the buses, so people are getting stuck where they are. And so what we've got is five minibuses, and we're basically saying to people, OK, tell us where you need to go and we'll try and get you there. What do you make of people like Clive and the efforts that people living in Leicestershire are trying to do their bit, Alicia? I think that's an incredibly heroic thing to do. And that what's important there is that Clive knows the people on the ground and he knows a specific ask and a specific request of support that's needed. Now, I know people don't like to hear this, but I have been speaking to the Ukrainians every few hours. I speak to Ukrainian MPs every few hours. I speak to the Defence Secretary. I speak to the Ukrainian ambassador. And I've also been speaking to the Poles and to other countries and the Romanians. They have all said, please stop sending these really kind and well-meaning gifts of clothes and food and medicine, because they cannot trust that when convoys arrive, that they haven't been tainted by the Russians. And secondly, they're actually they're actually slamming up, they're jarring up the logistical routes because there aren't that many routes, exactly like Clive was just saying. There aren't that many routes available. Um, so we're please asking, please donate through the ICRC, through the Red Cross, through uh, through the deck appeal. Or if you have a very specific opportunity like Clive where you know you can help, please do that. Um, I'm going to be launching an appeal for any body armour that anyone might have at home who's previously served in our armed forces because that's a specific request we've had from the Ukrainians um, to get those on board. And the Ukrainians have a specific shipment route that isn't going to jar up the roads. Um, So I'll be launching that appeal uh, in the next few days for anyone who has that sort of protective gear that we can get out to civilians. Alicia, that was very interesting and very insightful. So thank you for that update on that. And um, I must say, though, the government has been coming under fire hasn't it for its perceived lack of support for refugees doing a bit but some people say not enough so what would you say to that it's not enough and we have to go further and i've been very clear with the government that i'm uh, that we should be absolutely going beyond this um, the people fleeing ukraine are mainly women and their children who on an hourly basis do not know if their loved ones are going to survive, if their partners are going to make it through the week fighting against a Russian aggressor. We have to do everything we can to support refugees and to get them out. And that is exactly what I've been fighting to do. Alessia, thank you so much for your time. I'll let you I'll let you carry on with your day ahead. I know you have a busy day. Uh, that's Alessia Kunze, Conservative MP for Rutland and Melton and a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Jimmy Carpenter at breakfast. BBC Radio Leicester.